from Philadelphia, PA, Jessa Reed, everybody. Tonight I'm gonna tell the story of the last time I drank piss. Stop me if you've heard this one. First, I'm gonna explain how I went from being totally normal to the kind of person that has a story about drinking piss. Multiple stories. Okay, so like the first time I tried meth, I was 22, I was at a gig in Montana, when in Rome, (laughs) and I tried it on accident. I would never purposely try math. I'm not a scumbag. I thought it was Coke. And I thought it was Coke because the guy that gave it to me told me it was Coke. And what kind of world are we living in if you can't trust a stranger giving you drugs? So I do the line and the back of my head catches on fire. And I'm like, did you just slip me meth? Who slips people? So I yelled at him. I was like, I don't even think you roofie right, idiot. (laughs) Supposed to roofie girls so you can fuck them, not so they can help you take apart your microwave. (laughs) Okay, so this is where shit gets weird. Here's the thing. Uh, Don't ever try meth. Cause it's fucking awesome. (laughs) And you won't want to stop. I did the accidental roofie meth and was just addicted to meth for six years after that. Like ruined my life. I was just trying to do a bump at the club so I could learn how to line dance or whatever the fuck they do in Montana. Now I'm alone in my hotel room shaving off my eyebrows and shit. I get back home to Portland, Oregon. I quit doing comedy so I could pursue meth full time. (laughs) Really seemed like that was gonna work out better than it did. I mean, it probably paid about the same. I see we have comedians in here tonight. Uh, It was crazy though, cause I was so high. I was high as shit. So I didn't even realize the gravity of what was happening. I felt like I had just discovered the secret to happiness. I got home, I was bragging to my friends and family about my newfound meth habit. (laughs) Fucking none of them were happy for me. And then I just got defensive, like, well, this is who I am now, so if you can't handle whatever fucking Marilyn Monroe quote. You can't take me at my methiest. You don't deserve me when my trailer blows up. So my parents asked me to vacate their basement before I start selling off the TVs and shit. And I move into this sketchy meth hostel with multiple dudes named Shorty. And I just go completely off the rails. Here's the thing though, when you're high on meth, You can justify any kind of behavior. You can rationalize, like everything just makes sense. I think it's because your mind is so open. Like if you watch a video on the internet of somebody vacuuming their front yard on meth, you're like, that is crazy. That's because you're only using 6% of your brain. (laughs) If you were firing off at 98% meth capacity, you would be like, fuck, that makes perfect sense. My yard is filthy. (laughs) So still, nothing seemed to miss to me. I'm living with the shorties. I've got no job. I've lost my driver's license. I lost contact with my family, but I was in daily communication with the aliens. (laughs) Blues and grays, it was wild. My teeth fell out so fast, it was like how I imagine if a witch put a spell on you. They just crumbled like they were made of sand and hairspray. I was just (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. And my whole life revolved around meth. All I cared about was meth. But I I was like, yeah, but like I'm only snorting it. (laughs) That's practically recreational. I'm not like an addict like those guys that smoke it. Look at them, they're a mess. So when I started smoking it, 
That was a social decision. I was, I knew I was like, I'm going to be here for a while and I want to integrate into my meth community. You know what I mean? I want to like kind of plug in and it was a social thing for them. They would sit around and smoke meth and talk about where they were going to steal mail that day. <laughs> it was like joining the Tweakers Elks Lodge, you know? So I was like, and by that point I've been doing it long enough to know that as long as I don't shoot up, I'll be fine. Right. So when I started shooting up, <laughs> That was a financial decision. Uh, Cause you have to smoke that shit all day. It is not cost effective at all. You can shoot up once in the morning, you're good for the rest of the day. It's probably the most fiscally responsible decision I've made as an adult, <laughs> if I'm being honest. But I have super small veins, so I had to shoot up in my neck. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm trying to ease you guys in here. It gets way the fuck worse. Uh, shooting up in your neck is, um, inconvenient because <laughs> someone else has to do that for you and the kind of people that possess the skill set to hit you in your jugular not the kind of people that are fun to do meth with <laughs> I, I was into like making necklaces and collage art and shit they were into like home invasions and snuff porn <laughs> So shit gets kind of dark around this point, And this is when I start thinking like, God, there's gotta be a better way. Not like get sober or anything fucking stupid, just like a better way to do meth. <laughs> so I was Googling it. <laughs> Not enough information on the subject, but I came across this article and it was talking, it was like Time Magazine or something. It was talking about the meth epidemic and the reason that so many people were switching from cocaine to meth. Apparently some people had done this on purpose. And according to the article, the reason is because the meth high lasts so long. And according to the article, that's because your body can metabolize coke, but your body has no idea. It, you do a line and then it breaks it down and you're only high until it starts breaking it down, but your body has no idea what to do with meth. That's why you're high so long, because it goes in meth and comes out meth and you get to stay high that whole time. So I don't really know what the fuck the article was trying to say, but what I heard it saying was that we were pissing out thousands of dollars of liquid gold. <laughs> And I was going to be rich. <laughs> so I originally set out to find the formula for extracting meth from tweaker piss. And as I'm collecting buckets of my friend's urine, once again, there are no red flags going off. No thoughts that perhaps this is symptomatic of my life spiraling out of control. I was proud of myself. I was like, wow, I am really thinking outside the box. <laughs> this must be what Steve Jobs feels like. So after about 10 days of trying to do science, I was like, man, eh, chemistry's hard. I'm just gonna drink it from the tap. <laughs> You're so grossed out. It was my own piss. Give me some credit. I was like ladling it out of the bucket. So the first time I drank meth piss, I got so high that I went to the place in the matrix where like they plug their heads in and nobody wears makeup. But I went to the real one and I met my higher self and I met the higher selves of like my friends and shit and they taught me the true nature of consciousness and the wiring under the board. It was the most transcendental experience I've ever had and I've done a shit ton of psychedelics in case that's not obvious. <laughs> I spent the whole day at the Matrix place and when I came down, I was so transformed by this experience that I was just addicted to drinking meth piss. Here's the thing, don't ever drink meth piss because it's fantastic and you won't want to do any other drugs. <laughs> I did quit shooting up that day though, cause there was like no point, right? I started eating meth with a spoon out of the bag. Cause doing actual meth just became a technicality to manufacturing meth piss. <laughs> I had it down to a science. It was the second piss after you eat the meth that was the magical nectar. I told everyone about it. I converted no one. <laughs> 
I did get voted most likely to become a bag lady by my fellow tweakers. Because by that point, I spent my days raging against the reptilian agenda while sipping on my pizzer. <laughs> So the last time I drank meth piss, <laughs> I'll get to the point. We're, uh, I'm walking around Southeast Portland and it was, I had to, it was time to harvest, if you will. <laughs> and uh, I didn't like to do it in public restrooms because it was hard to get a clean catch. And the only person that I knew that lived in that neighborhood was my little sister. And my little sister at this point is the only family member that I will speak to because she's the only one I can be sure isn't working for George Bush. <laughs> But we are like complete opposite. She is 20 years old. She totally has her shit together. She has an apartment, job, car, boyfriend, whatever. I'm 27. I don't really have to clarify that I didn't have my shit together. I was <laughs> rolling up to her house to drink piss. She's also embarrassed of me, which rightfully so. When I knock on her door, I'm wearing my meth uniform, which is a bubblegum pink ball gown, like prom dress, like puffed out, like, you know, with tulle and satin and shit, out to here, Skechers, a stolen FBI windbreaker, a Barbie backpack, and a tiara. The tiara was because I didn't have any teeth left. You don't have a grill, you gotta wear a tiara because it draws the eyes upward. <laughs> She answers the door and sees that it's me, and she's like, ah, oh, um, my friends are here, and they don't get it. <laughs> Could you maybe come back never? And I was like, I don't give a fuck about your friends. I just need to use your bathroom. And she was like, oh, my God, are you going to shoot up? And I was like, no, I don't shoot up anymore. I'm living right. <laughs> She says, fine, you have two minutes, but I swear to God, you have to leave after that. So I go in there. I waste my entire two-minute allotment just rifling through her cupboards and her med, just trying to find, like, some type of receptacle to piss in. She doesn't even have a cup or anything. I'm like, what kind of barbaric-ass bathroom operation you run in here? <laughs> Finally, the only thing I can find is her toothbrush holder. Aww. I know, right? Get a fucking cup. <laughs> So I knocked the toothbrushes out of it. And it's like the cheap plastic kind, you know what I'm talking about? It comes with like Walmart, comes inside a wastebasket with like a shitty bath mat, you know what I'm talking about? And it it's got four holes and it looks like that thing is a lid. I always thought that thing was a lid, but trust me, it's not a lid because I am like working the fuck out of this goddamn thing. I can't get it off. The tiara sliding down, it's 90 degrees. She's banging on the door. Finally, I take her toothbrush and I'm like, I'm just going to pop it off with the toothbrush. I snap her toothbrush in half and I'm like, what the fuck is with everything in this bathroom? I guess I'm just going to have to friggin' go in, you know? So I don't know if you've ever tried to piss and... Probably not. <laughs> but it's like that, right? That thing at the carnival where you gotta shoot the water into the clown's round mouth. You know what I mean? <laughs> Only instead of winning a stuffed animal, you get piss on your hands. So I get about half of it in there. I go to throw it back. And I see inside of the holes that there's like like old toothpaste jerky and dust and shit. And I was like, oh, this is gross. I can't drink this without a chaser. So I hide it in her wastebasket and I go out of the bathroom. She falls in and I'm like, whoa, 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 don't go in there. Nothing weird's happening. I just need a Coke, and then I'm going to go in there and finish my normal thing that I was doing, and then I'll be out of your hair. So I go, I get the Coke. Of course, she scurries in there. She finds the broken toothbrush and the eight ball of my piss. So when I come back in, she's just like overreacting. <laughs> kicking me out of her house and shit. And I'm not really listening, but then I tune in all of a sudden and she's like, you're almost 30 years old. You need to wake up and get your shit together. To which I replied, all right. So in five years, I've done horrible things to get drugs. I've been intermittently homeless. I've had Ukrainians try to kill me and I'm addicted to drinking my piss. And apparently all I needed this whole time was someone to suggest that maybe I don't do this anymore. <laughs> It was the world's laziest intervention. 
even my sister was like, wait, really? And I was like, yeah, well, I mean, I can recognize that this has gotten weird. <laughs> You're chastising me while holding a bathroom accessory filled with my urine. I could probably use a break. And that was it, I got clean that night, it was 12 years ago. Well, technically, technically it was the next day because I totally drank that pee when she wasn't looking, but that was the last time that I drank piss. Thank you very much. Just a read, everybody. Give it up for Justin.